Hello everyone, happy Sunday. I know it's late, um, I didn't get a chance to come on and do my live today, so I decided I would come and do a video on today. Um, just wanted to check in with everybody, see how everybody's doing. Um, I hope you all are doing great. I hope you guys had a great Sunday. Um, I sure did. Um, I wanted to, first of all, um, mention my book. So I've gotten a couple of calls from a couple of different people and a couple of people, different people have said, hey, I sent, I ordered the book. And so um, I wanted to reiterate and say that the journal is a journal. It is for widows and possibly widowers if they would like to, to read it. Um, it's God's love for the grieving widow. Um, when I did this journal, um, I did it in tensions of um, wanting to let widows um, know how important we are to God. Um, I found out that the word widow was mentioned um, 81 times in the Bible, but rarely mentioned um, in the church. So I hopped on that and started reading the scriptures of what and how God feels about us widows. And, um, and so um, it's a 31 day journal. You can order it through Amazon, God's Love for the Grieving Widow, or either you can order it through me. Um, just um, get in contact with me and um, I can get you one out. If you know someone that's a widow, hey, I can. Um, this is a great gift for uh, someone that you know that is a widow. That's again, God's love for the grieving widow. And so um, it's a 31 day journal. Um, and um, I would greatly appreciate it. It's um, scriptures. And so, and the book. Now the book, you guys, there is beauty in my brokenness. The book is me and my honey boo's actual story from the time he taken ill to his death. And um, when we met, it is our story. This is for everyone, anyone to read um, that would um, just want to know about our story. Um, it's a great read. It's an easy read. Um, it's a quick read, but it's um, very impactful and powerful. It is um, my story, our journey, and um, you will really be blessed from this book, There is Beauty in My Brokenness. So I wanted to get that out of the way and um, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about, I have a friend that's um, near and dear to me. Um, my friend, her and her family, her entire family, you know, she's like my sister. And um, right now her husband is um, fighting for his life. He um, is battling COVID. And so, um, you guys, please lift my friend Sandra. Her husband is Peter Rogers. Lift him up in prayer. Stand in agreement with us. We're believing God for him to pull through you all. Again, I want to say we don't know the time, the hour, when our time is going to come. We don't know what day. You know, I always say, you know how the word says that God knew us when he formed us. So he knows the numbers of our days. We don't know, but he knows. Nothing catches God by surprise, right? So it catches us, but nothing catches God by surprise, right? So you guys, I want to say again, 
make sure that you have talks with your loved ones, with your spouses, whoever does the bills, teach the one another what the pass codes are, your emails. These things are so important because say if you just, um, you have an accident, right? It's not always in death, but say you have an accident and, and, and that person cannot talk for themselves. They can't speak for themselves. Well, you know, it's like them actually not being here any longer. So we have to get our wills and our living trust things together, get some life insurance, um, because listen, you guys, I, I say I am a living tes testimony of being a housewife, um, dependent on my husband, um, and now he's no longer here with us, and so um, I can't get my widow's pension until I'm 60 and I'm 57, so there's a lot of people that have had um, loss, they've had to, they've lost everything, they, um, you know, they're living with their children. Um, a lot of people think that us as widows have it going on and that um, our spouses have left us, you know, millions of dollars, but it's rough, it's hard for us. It's, um, God has been good to me though. He has been faithful to me. I have not had a want. Um, he has provided for me. He has taken care of me. Um, I just thank him. I just thank him for looking out for me, for looking out for the widow, um, for considering me. There's a lot that I've been through, but he's been so faithful. Even if I felt weary and tired um, from what all I've had to go through, God still has been faithful, and um, I'm thankful to that. Um, I'm thankful for that. Um, I'm thankful for my support. You all support the widows and the widowers, you guys, and the orphan children as well. Um, it's not a journey that I wish on nobody, although I know that we're all here and we're just passing through and we're only here for a certain period of time. It's so hurtful to have friends who husbands are being challenged. That is so hard for me. I mean, like death is off the chart for me, you guys. It has my anxiety and um, things so off the chart. You guys, please pray for me. Um, I'm trying the best that I can. You guys, this is, it's not an easy road to be on. Um, keep building great memories with your spouses and don't take your family for granted. Um, my bishop was teaching today on a fence, and man, I said, you know, it wasn't no step on your toes. I was like, you know, it was like he had a sludge hammer just going, like, beating us down on today. But I thank God that I have the heart of God. I thank God that I can be forgiven, um, a forgiven person. Sometimes it hurts, but... I truly have the heart of God when it comes down to forgiving people. You know, um, he was saying that he really forgives and I was like, wow, I truly have a heart of God and a heart like my bishop. And so, um, man, you guys, I'm so thankful to God that that is not really a struggle. Have I been offended? Sure. Yes, I have, but 
if you really judge the character of the person and you you really know that person you really know if they hurted you intentionally or if they were just ignorant to what they did and what they said about you you know so um i um you know anyway but um i love you guys so much and i just wanted to get on and and do a video and um listen you guys we have to be forgiven people you know it seems like it's the church if we're supposed to be an example of who Christ is and what Christ did for us when you turn back and look at the feet of Jesus and know what he did for you and for me and I know that even though I'm offended I'm hurt I'm moving on but I make sure that my heart is right. I make sure that my slate is clean because I know that there's so much that I have to ask God to forgive me for and how dare me be judgmental and not forgive somebody else when I got to turn it back around and look in the mirror at myself and say, God, you sent your only begotten son for my sins. He said, when you pray, stand in forgiveness. So if you're praying and you're being unforgiven, you're living in unforgiveness, don't expect for God to answer your prayers. This is probably why some of your prayers have not been answered. Because you got an odd against your brother because you were offended. He says, go to that brother and ask for forgiveness. You know, conversate one an with one another to see if there's something that, you know, can be reconciled. You have family members that haven't talked to each other, sisters, brothers, and mothers, and um, parents, and siblings, and um, it's, it's just... Man, it's just mind-baffling to me for some people to say, I have not talked to my sibling in five years. You know, like that. But just take an evaluation. And if you have offended anybody, call that person and just ask for forgiveness. Because listen, we have to every day go before our Father and say, Father, forgive me for something. Right? And... You know, that thing is you're harboring all of that on your body is not good for your body. So, yeah, you guys, um, try, try Jesus and try um, just forgiving. You will be amazed how you really will be helping yourself. Um, you know, your physical body, your mind, your mental state, um, because you're in bondage. So, I love you guys so much. And I just wanted to get on, hop on, and share that. And uh, you guys remember, make sure you have life insurance. Make sure you have your will and your trust. If you just have a will only, you will still have to obey you guys. Talk to your spouse about what they want. Do you want to be cremated? Do you want to be laid to rest? Where do you want to be laid to rest? Do you want to go back home or do you want to be, you know, wherever you stay at? Um, have these conversations so that you'll know um, what your spouse's wishes are. Um, don't forget um, passwords to the cell phones, to your Apple to your um, computer, um, knowing your spouse's social security numbers, knowing if you are, uh, um, if you're, uh, if you were married before, and um, you may have been married before and divorced, and 
you still work in the same job and your first wife is the one that is on your 401k or your retirement and you've been you've been married a while with the new wife um check and see who you if you want to change your beneficiaries or if you want to keep it like that you can but if say if you had a nasty divorce and you're married and you're happily married and you pass away and then the ex-wife will be able to come in and claim because you forgot to go back to take her off and put the current wife on as your beneficiaries. Um, so just little um, information and um, I look forward to bringing you guys more information um, soon. Love you guys. Take care and don't forget about the books. Okay, so this week um, I had been already five stars with my journal. I became five stars with my book this week and I am thankful and grateful for everyone for your love and your support. Love you guys. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.